Here's my moose again, and he's pulling on this package, and then pretty soon he pulls hard, he pulls hard, he pulls hard, and then the package is gonna start moving. But when it does that, remember we, when we look at that interface right in between here and here, it looks like this. And once, this, once that sled starts moving, these little pieces break off and the interchange changes. It's no longer a static situation. It's actually easier as I pull harder, I require less force to keep it moving because the little pieces act like ball bearings. Sometimes they've got air floating in there. So it's easier to keep it moving than it does to get it moving. So now I've switched situations and now I'm in a kinetic friction situation. Kinetic friction situation. And because it's constant, the force of kinetic friction is unequal to, it's not an inequality, is equal to the coefficient of kinetic friction between these two materials times the normal force. So how much force is required to get it moving is different than is required to keep it moving. Keep it moving at a constant speed. So how hard does my how hard does my moose have to pull now? Well, so the the force for so the sum of the forces in the x direction have to equal zero. So the force of the moose is in the positive direction, and the force of friction is in the negative direction, and these equal zero. So the force of the moose is going to equal the force of friction. The force of friction in this case is mu k times the normal force. I already know what the normal force is from before. That's 38 times 10. It's just the force of gravity. But I need a different mu k. So before, this was the static friction between the ice. Kinetic frictions are generally less than, less than the static frictions. So here I've got 0 0.3 times 38 kilograms times 10. Now my moose only needs to pull my calculator go. Found a new one. All right. Now my moose only needs to pull 0 0.3 times 38 times 10, which is 114 newtons. All right. Now I'm required less force to pull to keep it moving than it does to not than to get it moving. Yeah, once it slides, you're doing okay. So that's kinetic friction, that's a constant. Something I didn't focus too much on before is this letter mu. So this is the Greek letter mu, it's the Greek letter m. So how when we let's go back to kindergarten here for a second and we have Right, so here's the letter H. Let me use a different letter, a different color here. There's H, and we can say E and then L, right? Hello. Mu. Mu goes below the line, and it's only halfway up. Similar to like a, let me extend this out a little bit here. So a G would go below the line. Just like mu goes below the line, it has three, one, two, three. It's kind of like a long M. It's like an M and a mu. It's an M and a U shoved together.